Hi, Mike Crowell here. Uh, so about a month ago, I picked up this used Shopsmith. Uh, it had a loose wire inside. It had run through the insulation and uh, because it wasn't where it was supposed to be. And it shorted out. So I had to take this apart, fix everything, get it back together. Uh, so this is the first, this is the video dealing with that. Um, there will be another that talks about the, the rest of the Shopsmith getting the tables cleaned up and aligned. If you're into that sort of thing, this is your place. Grab a nice cup of coffee and your vintage Shopsmith mug and dig in. If you find these videos useful, then go ahead and hit subscribe or like. If you don't find them useful, you're welcome to do that too. I don't know why you do that, but I would appreciate it and it could be fun. Uh, but let's get into this. So here's my Shopsmith that I bought used. Um, it looks to be in pretty decent shape. However, when I plugged the motor in and turned it on, it, it worked smooth. But as soon as I increased the speed a little bit, it got bound up and sounded to me like it shorted the motor out. I'm going to investigate that. The belt does not turn particularly well. Uh, but what has to happen is this motor has to come off which means this piece has to come off and I'll show you how I do that using the table. So the first thing you'll probably think is this table's in the way, uh, but the table's not in the way. So what you do, take a piece of sturdy lumber and what you're gonna do, pardon me while I cross in front of the camera, is uh, you, you want to get that under the, now you can hear this thing needs lubrication. That's the whole point. So you get that up on the side. Now you can lift this. And I'm using the table to hold that motor up so I can slide it off the end. It needs to go a little bit higher. That's what I'll do now. Grab that sucker and go. Not cool. Got to Did you see that? So the tube came out of the other end. No wonder this thing didn't work well. That's all gonna be fixed. I think it's worth pointing out that I've never done this before. I mean, I've taken the cover off. You have to do a little service and cleaning on these things. Uh, I've never actually replaced one of the drive belts, uh, but that's probably one of the things this needs. I'm hoping the motor is in good shape. I won't know till I get this apart. What better time to learn? take these uh, cogs off or this won't be able to come out. If you own a shopsmith, you know that already. I'm not telling you anything new. First glimpse. Boy, everything on this thing is loose. The uh, oh my gosh, I don't know what 
what happened to this thing, but it appears to have lived a rough life, even though it generally looks new. So let's keep going. Now that's turning way better than it was. Look, that's not supposed to come off. Um, geez, man. Okay. I'm going to need a figure and out party. Well, here's what's happened. So I did plug it in, started it up. It seemed to run okay. It shorted out again. Might have found one of the causes. A um, couple of nicks in the wires. There is that plastic clip where it's supposed to keep the wires out of this mechanism, but I think it was tangled up in there and probably wore through the wire and shorted it out. So the question now is, did it short the motor out? And I think I would like to have this tested somewhere else because it blew the circuit in my shop and it will not reset. Well, that just might be a telltale sign of what was going on. Look at the arcing on that wheel. Sort of like, I can't turn it very well, but that looks like electrical uh, arcing that has burned that wheel. That's not supposed to be that way. So one of the suggestions I got from my friends in the ShopSmith forum on Facebook said to use hot glue. I did that. And... Uh, I like how it uh, it fills into the little holes. I'm gonna try to see if this will shrink wrap. I had to slit the shrink wrap tubing to get it over the wire. It's probably not gonna work, but if it doesn't, I'm gonna leave it and wrap tape on that. So let's see what happens. that's hot <clears throat> well it got smaller which is better so now I'll just wrap it in tape and then we're going to reassemble this thing and see if it works so while this is apart I'm going to get all this cleaned out of here I've lubricated this I've lubricated the quill I extended the quill and put wax on all that uh, I did shoot a little bit of WD on, on this mechanism here, uh, but just a little. And I'm going to do this as well, because this, this is really tight. So I'm just cleaning it up with uh, a brass bristle brush. Say that three times fast. I'm going to give that a little bit of wax and then follow it up with the old WD. Um, then I'll put it together. I think it'll be fine. It hasn't been used in a long time. So it's going to get some use now. So I'll get the wax in there. I'm going to wax these little bubble things just to give them a little bit of uh, lubrication. Actually, I might just leave that as it is. Yeah, it's probably fine. Um, not much more to do to this. This is uh, actually pretty darn clean, but like I said, all the little belt shavings from probably someone operating it in, inappropriately. But while that's done, and while the, while the motor's out of the case, this is the time to do it. Um, I'm going to Try to get some oil into the sheaves as well. I've oiled these. Uh, can you see it? It's where the uh, where the way tubes go through. Uh, 
put some grease, uh, not grease, wax into there. So I got them cleaned up nice, ready to go back together. So I'm getting ready to put the motor back in. You want as much beltage as, as you can get here because it has to go over this large pulley. I'm going to work the pulley into here like that. You probably won't be able to see that on video. But what I did was I opened up these, these sheaves, which I guess is the lowest setting. And I don't know, but these need to be far apart so the belt can come out more. And then once I get the motor in, I'll reroute the wires and secure them so they don't get snagged in the mechanism again. I'll leave the camera on. doesn't seem so bad. So let's get this in there. So the wires are plugged into the switch. Uh, when you put them on, you'll, you, you'll feel them get a little tight. And if you keep pushing a little bit, you'll get a little bit of a snap. And you know they're uh, on tight. Now they do have to go on that plastic clip. And I'm going to secure them even more. But you won't be able to see that with the camera once I get all this stuff back together. So. This is it. Okay, everything's back together. Everything's screwed in tight. I even put the caps back on the end of here. Um, I'm going to plug it in and give it a shot and see if my amazing wiring job did its trick. Last time I did this, I blew the circuit out. Seems to have done the trick. Um, gosh, this thing. Ah. Anyway, there you go. So, patched the wires, gave them a good solid connection. I, I used the hot glue trick that someone pointed out online, and uh, that seemed to work pretty well. I tried to shrink wrap over it, but since I couldn't get it in one piece over the uh, connectors without cutting it apart, uh, I just wrapped it around there and uh, Heated it anyway, and then covered it with a good quality electrical tape, like someone else pointed out. So thanks everybody in ShopSmith World for all your help. Um, I now have a workable motor. Thanks.